The Chancellor had his head in his hands as the atrium was silent. It was a few months later, and the new snake-like race, the Arasaka, hissed at one of the other new species, tail rattling loudly as their four hands gripped their podium, the sound of hissing acid eating into the duraplas it was constructed from. Beside them was the bear-like species, the Ursa, who had adopted the human constellation name due to their species name being too hard to pronounce for most. They too were scowling at the same species that the Arasaka were, the porcelain-like, spherical, many-lagged, limbed ing, who were attempting to look on with disdain, though they were clearly unnerved, despite the triad of eyes being unable to portray much emotion, their circular, spinning, grinder-like mouths eternally open, their rows of teeth twisting back and forth nervously as they gazed at the ones with a grievance with them glare at them. You mean to tell me that the Ing decided to make a statement and attacked a human settlement that both of you had sent your people to to observe what they called a mixed martial arts competition? The Chancellor said slowly, as several races watched with interest. And not only were the Ing prevented from succeeding, they had been beaten off by an old, angry ARC-class colony ship, a civilian vessel with limited, outdated ADS armaments. The Ing balked when it heard the words limited and outdated. Rasping sounds were heard, made by the twisting of teeth, rose and air hissing past them, swiftly translated by a device before them. That was not an outdated vessel, that was a warship. It grabbed our vessels and flung them against one another, breaking them like eggs. It should not have been able to even mar the surface of our vessels. The sentient almost snarled, one of its limbs shaking in the air like a fist. And yet you were trounced by a ship that has several centuries under its keel and was a participant in what the humans refer to as the Encounter Wars. It's well versed, even without its crew, an admiral said from one of the stands, scowling. And now you have humanity and their allies chomping at the bit for threatening a civilian system with your actions. The only reason why they aren't here at this moment is because they are in the middle of moping up hostile forces and fending off several incursions across their side of the galaxy, the Chancellor said, before the Ursa's podium lit up, a rueful look on their face, along with the relaxing of the Arasaka at their side. Yes, Representative Kalta, the Chancellor said, looking over, and stopped as he saw a small badge, holographic, sitting innocently on the two races' podiums. Humanity extended invitation, Arasaka and Ursa accepted, many Elder Mother vessels waking from hibernation. Ursa agreed to aid Elder Vessels in defending our worlds from interlopers. Came the low, growling voice of the bear-like creature, their ear twitching gently, as if listening to a voice no one else could hear. The warm-furred one is correct. This is squishy warm oneses, and the warm sister scales welcomed Eusess into their denses. Let us see how they shared how they fought and taught their young. We would be fools is to let promising Siskilsis pass as uses by, the Arasaka said before scowling. Especially after the attack of the Ing, attempting to kill our observers, the snake said, releasing their podium, trying to ignore the trenches their claws had dug with their leaking acid. Because they fly in the face of normality, as do you, frail creatures who have no right to being anything more than... Enough, the Chancellor roared, voice echoing out through the chamber thanks to the acoustics. Another word from you, and you will be ejected from the room, they said, scowling at the ing, before sighing heavily, and then paled, realizing that two of the new races had already allied with humanity. This was... bad. Many of the other young races were watching in fascination at the Ursa and the Arasaka as they scowled, before the doors opened suddenly. Apologies for the wait. Hendrix isn't available as he's en route to meet with an armada that was chasing the demons that we bumped into towards the end of Mop-Up. Now, what is going on here? Came the voice of Admiral Serrano, wearing his best, as opposed to the normal human diplomat. The Chancellor pushed the growing horror of the fact that humanity was in the middle of a first contact scenario. The more pressing and worrying matter was that one of their admirals, while a registered representative, was here. The Ing were explaining why they were demanding compensation for their lost vessels. The Chancellor said, getting a deep scowl out of the human. Are they now? The human said, turning his gaze to the Ing. Well then, you will have to be disappointed 
because I heard something interesting on my way over, and have half a mind to request the Federation declare war, though it may as well be a series of small battles if what Ark Sola told us was any indication. The elderly man said, walking up to the podium, and plugged a chip into the console. Above the Chancellor, a hologram lit up, showing a Ing Baron, perched atop a velvet-like material, like some sort of strange jeweled egg, beady eyes staring at the holosensors. Frail organics, your time has come to fulfill your duties. Your species will make for wonderful delicacies, your skins beautiful tapestries when we finish. If you're lucky and surrender now, maybe we will let a few of you live to make us more to hunt for sport. A great honour, I hope you know. Whatever the rest the bejeweled Ing was about to say was cut off as the entire ship shook violently, the Ing flung off their pedestal and off screen, even as the translators worked feverishly to try and translate the background hisses and screeches before the playback ended. The Ing that stood there as a representative was silent, all pretense of superiority completely gone as it stepped back as the human glared at them. You really think you can go, threaten to eat us, and force us to become little more than breeding stock. I'm afraid that you just made a grave, grave mistake. Tell your leaders that if we do not receive an explanation as to why this idiot decided to attack a civilian world with intent to consume our people and visitors, as the logs show you fired upon the two diplomatic ships in system as soon as you dropped in, then expect to receive a declaration of war. The human said firmly, as a snarl hissed out as he finished, the feeling of an angry beast settling into the room. The sensation of being watched by unseen eyes filling the room, mainly all focused on the Ing, who seemed to regain a little of their vigour. As if we will bow to your demands, you are fit to be nothing more then. Metal screamed as the dura steel was gouged up out of the floor, thick shavings torn out, racing towards the Ing, making them screech in pure fear and skittered away from their podium, even as Serrano barked out a order. Hold your fire. The shrieking metal stopped, followed by a low snarling groan as something phantasmal slowly filled into the space. Now which... Ah, the human said, as his eyes lit up with recognition at the towering warped form of an old seafaring vessel, an old Sumner class, shrunk down to fit in the room, with mechanical crustacean-like legs jutting out of its sides, from the front and the aft. Her pointed bow split open in a metallic moor, her barrels aimed down at the ing before her. On her bow were the worn words, USS Laffey. Enterprise put you up to this, didn't they, old girl? The human sighed, even as the archaic vessel rumbled deeply. It didn't quite speak words, though everyone could tell that it was almost crooning at the Admiral, before snarling again, the taste of hellfire and hot lead touching the back of everyone's minds as the barrels chambered something, still aimed down at the creature. No, move, the eldritch vessel snarled, its voice a mix of its old crew, all mishmashed together speaking at once, even as it flickered in and out of reality, as if losing cohesion now that it wasn't allowed to rip and tear the creature behind it. Around the council chambers, every sentient was silent, watching in muted shock and horror as the aging admiral patted the side of the ethereal sea vessel. Laffy, old girl, calm down. No need to make a mess. Yet, much as I would like to send him in pieces back, I'd like to hear what their leadership has to say for the actions of their people, though it seems like the mindset might not be as rare as I might hope. Serrano said with a half-grin, even as the barrels lit with an unearthly fire, clearly wanting to be given a reason to drag the Ing to the underworld. Behind the human watching in shock were the Arasaka and the Ursa, as the eldritch vessel backed off, even as the Ing spoke. What? What is this? What horror did you sell yourselves to? They said, scrambling away, eyes not leaving the beast as it settled down behind the Admiral, behind the Ursa and the Arasaka, even as the Admiral laughed lightly. No one, actually. Old Laffy here is an old vessel we built, easily centuries ago, nearly a thousand, I think. She's not the only one either. Our vessels are put together by hand, even if their parts are made in a factory. The combined care that the crew's putting them together, and in designing them, often gives them that little spark of life, and from there, their crews stoke that spark into a full-blown soul. Wasn't till recently that they could do little more than just carry us, and do little things, of course. 
the old human said with a slowly growing smirk as the Chancellor sighed. This is another reason why we warned you not to mess with the humans. The Chancellor sighed quietly to themselves, their hooves stamping on the ground nervously before speaking louder, audible now. Their living vessels may die, but that doesn't mean they are gone, or their crews for that matter. They said, eyeing the massive vessel as it rumbled, the taste of radiation licking the edges of many's consciousness, the horror crooning as its admiral rubbed its bow gently, allowing it to slowly wrap a limb around him. Be thankful, most of the more protective of our fleet chose physical bodies to be rehoused in, or you wouldn't be much more than a smear if you were lucky. A few spare atoms at worst, the admiral said calmly, still caring for the massive ship, even as the Ing staggered to their feet watching in horror. There, there are more, it squeaked, all pretense gone, even as many of the more superstitious races nervously watched and jumped as they heard chattering hisses, sounding like rapidly firing weapons, and caught the glint of serrated teeth, long blades, hungry maws leaking nuclear fire in several cases, or heard the tiny whine of engines. Oh, plenty more. Once we discovered how alive our ships were, why bother stopping? It made failsafe much easier, saved many lives because they could have their own ship watch their backs as they watched the backs of their vessels. We didn't expect them to stay when they lost their bodies. First time the Enterprise claimed a new body was a wonderful scare for everyone, especially her own crew she had fallen to protect. The human admiral said with an amused tone, Their numbers grow, some passing on with their crews, of course, but many hanging around to protect until they have nothing left. So if you think you can try and turn us into a rotisserie meal of some form, the human said, eyes flashing with something that sent shivers down many races' spines or analogues of, as barrels glinted around the chamber, glowing with eldritch energy. I think you'll find humanity ways to ensure that doesn't happen, to us or our allies, he said before calming down, clapping his hands together. Now then... The room lightened up in a perceptible way, even though the light level never changed, as the Admiral stepped up to his podium, as the Laffey faded row a thin outline, staying right behind him, close to him, her growl never leaving, her limbs slowly wrapping around the Arasaka and Ursa, slowly making them shiver, even though the Arasaka had to fight not to melt into the deliciously warm limbs and side of the soul vessel. To business. We have much to discuss and much to lose if we don't act quickly, the Admiral said, face gaining a solemn expression as images appeared above the Chancellor of the recent fights all across their side of the galaxy.